Fetas plays an important role in the governance and management of all schools in South Africa, in the sense that there are so many legal aspects and governance matters in education of which most principals and educators still have limited experience. It is important for a school to be a member of FETSAS as not only are we the leaders in school governance and management, but we also train, inform, guide and advise all our members in best practice and experienced solutions. Who is FETSAS? FETSAS is the national representative organization for school governing bodies. FETSAS informs, organizes, mobilizes and develops its members to achieve and maintain the highest international standards in school governance and management. We advise within the public and private educational sectors, focusing on the foundation, intermediate and senior phases. A school's governing body or SGB operates primarily outside the classroom. It is the SGB's task to make sure everything outside the classroom is in shape that infrastructure, discipline, budgets, human resources and finances are efficiently managed. FETSAS can assist you with all the aspects of your school governing board's primary role, which is creating a conducive environment in the best interest of the school. Furthermore, FETSAS can assist in strategic planning, sound financial management and human resources aspects such as appointment, discipline and termination of contract processes. When dealing with appointments of principals, FETSAS wants to support you to appoint the best possible leadership candidates for your school, for the sake of our children. Be a part of FETSAS and know that you are part of a larger community that will always provide you with the latest information which is accurate and reliable. There is always someone within FETSAS who has the experience of past challenges and solutions, simply a call away. We at FETSAS will walk alongside you to take your governing body forward to achieve greater heights. FETSAS has extensive experience in education matters. As an active, dynamic organization, it is fully informed of developments and restructuring in the education field and can advise its members accordingly. FETSAS is a democratic, non-political organization and members elect their leaders along the lines of the national school governing body elections. What does FETSAS stand for? FETSAS believes in maximum autonomy for governing bodies and therefore strives to expand governing bodies' rights, competencies and skills. FETSAS supports and promotes governing bodies' powers and the rights as defined in the legal framework of the Constitution. South African Schools Act and Acceptable Governance Principles. Former State President Nelson Mandela said, Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Education is a great engine for personal development. Through education, the daughter of a peasant can become a doctor. Children of mine workers become heads of mines. The child of farm workers can become president of the country. Here at FETSAS, we do what we do because we love our children, we love our schools, and we love our country. We look forward to being of service to every school governing body in South Africa. Yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, it's like an almost phenomenal to see you again. And yes, it's uh, such a privilege to be together today. Uh, we had a tech talk yesterday on something completely different, uh, on robotics and a masterclass in robotics. So we're introducing something we call masterclasses this term. Uh, moving away from the traditional webinar vibe and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it and please give us feedback uh, in that regard. So today we're talking online safety, uh, a very critical element. We're all online now. We all got notice of this meeting online. <laughs> Probably all of us have our phone next to us if we're not using our phone to be online and it's, it's all around us. Uh, you're always on. You're always on when you go to church, you read whatever it is that you read there. You go to the choir festival that I joined yesterday and all the moms are on and sending pictures to Omar of the kids singing immediately. So the online world is 100% part of our lives. So, so we're talking about the risks, the fears and the possible 
uh, detrimental decisions we take in that. So I'm very glad to, to invite four um, speakers today uh, representing four different companies. Some of them might be competition, uh, but we believe in addressing the problem together. So we call it co-opetition. Uh, in a sense, everyone is, is rendering a service and giving us a product, uh, but we want to change and effect change in our schooling space. Uh, in the school world that we live in. So uh, welcome to, to our guests, our panelists today. They're going to open their uh, cameras as we speak. So first up, we've got Sonica from a company called Zono. They've got a very innovative product. Uh, Sonica, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, FYI Play It Safe. Uh, Rachel is working in space. She's also uh, working this space in protecting kids. Uh, uh, got kids of her own, and we see it in our own homes. Then we've got uh, Kate Farina uh, from Be in Touch. She, most of you, uh, if, if you joined us before, would know uh, Josh uh, from Be in Touch. We ran a big uh, campaign last year. I don't see. Okay, jumping on yet, uh, we, we wanted to introduce the OT process of um, facial recognition so that you know, kids are not addressed by someone outside of their age group whilst they're online. Uh, a very innovative product. So Kate, you can open your mic and then and your, your screen. And then we've got uh, Rianette Leibovic. Uh, we all know her well. She's been a friend and partner in this fight with Fetsnas, Fetsas for the past five, six, maybe seven years. Uh, Renette, I think it's back to 2015, if I'm not mistaken. Buy a donkey for you and set the in your deal now of the Alreta, if you could possibly in the background, just check where is Kate? She was supposed to answer our first question. <laughs> um, but I'm going gonna, gonna to set the scene a little bit. So Ladies, interesting. Yeah, there we go, Kate. Uh, we're, it's me and a and, uh, group of ladies today. <laughs> Only realize it now. Um, what is the problem? We have an increasingly digital society. School is part of society and school reflects what happens in society. So we've got increasingly uh, digital learners coming to school and suddenly there's a barrier or there's a disconnect that our learning space and our living space is not on the same cornerstones. It's not on the same value system. It's not, and and this brings tension. Uh, I think there was by a spanning in personal commerce. By school is here, no phone and school irony. No phones during school hours, as if that stops the problem because kids get in the car and they've got a Bluetooth car and mom gives them the phone and they've got better phones than their parents, and this is the world we live in. So there's tension in there. Um, Kate, to start off with, um, what do you see as the problem? Uh, what what sort of problems do you encounter in the work that you do? Just just may, maybe I'm wrong. Is this an issue? Oh, thanks very much, Rihanna. Sorry, couldn't unmute myself. So that was one of our tech uh, problems that we've already started with today. All of us, we're all in a certain uh, demographic here presenting today because we all have the same technical challenges, I think. And I think what you said earlier about um, us always being online, online and offline today is all part of one world, especially for the younger generation. Um, and I think why we started Be In Touch really with a, with a tagline of keeping kids safer and saner online was with an initial focus and still a primary focus on parents. Uh, myself, I'm a 50 something mother of a, two teenagers and we don't know as parents today what to do. We, we, we don't, a lot of us realize yet that online parenting is such a key part of today's modern day parenting repertoire. And many of us don't know where to start. It's confusing, it's, it's difficult. And so we put our heads in the sand. We hope like heck that um, all will be well and that it won't be our kid. But um, of course, <clears throat> when the baptism of fire happens, that's when we are galvanized to try and do something about this. I think the other big thing we're seeing today in the work that we do is that <clears throat> parents are very much focused on being their child's best friend rather than being their best parent. And such a difference in that, and particularly for many of us, how we were brought up, quite different to how this today's generation of parents are, are approaching parenting. So that's another big challenge with trying to get the, the but, urgency back I to parents. interrupt you there? Yeah. Yes. I just want to up on something. You now yeah. mentioned parents want to be their child's best friend. I walk into rooms, social gatherings where parents are. I walk into staff rooms or principal's offices. And there's this thing about 
but the kids are doing this and the kids are doing that on their phones mm. on their i'm like but who bought them the phone because mm. i don't think kids earn enough money to get a six sixteen thousand rand iphone or something yeah. so it's like we're complaining about the stuff that the kids are doing but we're enabling them is is is, is that the disconnect that we're seeing in the parenting side yeah, I think it's very much a hands-off parenting um, approach, and it is very different, very different to how I was brought up as a parent, and I know I'm also a lot different as a more, you know, older parent to the sort of 30 and 40-somethings that I hang around with, courtesy of my of my children, um, but I think also parents uh, don't realize they need to stay connected, so not just connected in real life, but also connected with their children online, and I know that's part of the work that Rochelle um, focuses on, and it's also part of what we focus on, is that being an online parent is not about spying on your kid, it's about staying connected and being there for them when they really need them, when they really need you. So that is a big hurdle that we're trying to get through and get over, is this concept of online parenting being a very healthy part of today's modern parenting and understanding things like age restrictions of apps and social media, um, looking into that, understanding what kids are being exposed to online um, and not more than just the how much of screen time. It's the what and the when and uh, the with who and the where it's happening, because all of those obviously factor into what kids are doing, seeing, experiencing and being challenged with online. Okay. Leonette, if you want to add to that, what, what are the problems that you're encountering? You've been in the space for a while. You have Alex at school, you have Praikis, you have to write a book. Uh, tech savvy children uh, what is the problem that we need to address uh, is there a problem or should we just manage the situation yes mute sorry no, thanks i never thought when i was still in school i never dreamed of writing a book about cyber safety and i definitely didn't consider the facts or the possibility that people would use something like the internet to hurt and harm some people and each other. So um, to me, the problem is that we have this problem because, and it's not gonna go away. Um, unfortunately, it's a reality. And some, um, I would like to highlight five and I de definitely echo what Kate has already shared and Rian also what you have said. So one of the biggest ones is fear. I think fear creates such a worry and such a boundary that people and especially sometimes schools feel like it's too much we've got so much to deal with already we've got curriculums and this and this and this plus things like other technology and never mind COVID that there's just not time and energy to spend on this as well and hopefully we can demystify some of that today and make it easier so fear big deal and then secondly behavioral change I've I've noticed and I've heard that children or learners in school are tired because they spend so much time online at night. Um, they are distracted. Mm. The ripple effect of things like cyberbullying and sexting and the worries that they have um, in terms of the social media pressure. We all know they don't only have their peer pressure, now they also have it online. And then just the the danger zones that they are in it really definitely affects the behavior in class, which makes it more challenging for teachers to actually get good results, etc. The third thing is, of course, the volumes of content and specifically speaking at schools now, because there's so many other very important topics. I mean, we are talking about cyber safety today, but physical health and all the other aspects are also important. And I think that's a challenge when it comes to schools for to be on top of the dangers in cyberspace um but luckily we've got some solutions coming for that and then um just something that i've noticed as well is schools are spending more and more time to you know update their policies in terms of internet and social media use and then disciplining um dealing with cyber bullying issues dealing with parents and learners who are you know, taking it out on each other online. So the time that schools need to allocate towards the disciplining side is a big one. And then the lastly, parents. So the first four was all based at school and then at home, yes, parents, of course. And it starts with the parents, but I, I wish they would be more involved, more informed 
and that they would work together with the school because there's so many times parents expect the school to teach our children digital literacy and how to become responsible digital citizens. And Rian, like you said, unfortunately, we need to look at our own behavior and the mm. example that we are setting. Very much so. So what I'm hearing is, I like the word fear. Uh, fear is never good. <laughs> fear is just basically not knowing what you don't know. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld said uh, there are three things. There are the known knowns. Those are the things we know we know about and they don't scare us. There are the known unknowns. Those are the things we know we don't know about and they concern us. But then there is the unknown unknowns. Those are the things we don't even know we don't know about and they make us run. And I think this is where I want to position our talk today. Yes, there's a lot to fear. There's a lot to, to learn. But we got to move from the unknown, unknown world to the known, unknown world to the known, known world so that we can manage this process. Some years ago, Henry Ford created the car. And before the car was there, there was no such thing as license, age to drive, traffic rules, nothing. Yet today, it's custom and practice. It's normal for us to say, at 18, my kids can drive. At 17, they get their learners. So there's an age thing and there's a skill thing that comes with it. <laughs> So age appropriate is very definite. And I hear that there's talks of possibly some lobby groups wanting to change the drinking age in this country to 21. So age is a very, very significant element. But then skill, we give licenses because we give people a car that has an accelerator, but we tell them about the brake at the same time. And I think this is where I'm struggling with school policy, with society saying, do you know how dangerous this thing is? This thing is so dangerous. It's like a gun. This thing lying by itself on the table can do nothing, but in the hands of a person, it can do something, either good or bad. So this is, this is where I want to position our talk. We're looking at um, a few, we call it solutions and areas to address this. I'm going to speak to, to Sonica first. Sonica is the head of operations for a company called Zono. I came across them a few years ago, and they're in this space slightly different to just purely online safety. Um, Sonica, you, you, you talk about whistleblowing, uh, an, an additional protection tool for, for learners. And then we're going to chat to uh, Rochelle uh, about FYI I played safe after that. But Sonica, please, please introduce yourself and, and just share a little bit about what solutions Zono has. And if you want, I can share your slides. You just give me a, the go ahead. Hi, Rian. Thank you so much. Um, yes, it'd be brilliant if you can share the slide, please. Um, Zono is an anonymous safeguarding and reporting platform, and we know that schools and other institutions have really emphasized on trying to sort out issues like bullying, like racism, um, abuse, um, gender-based violence, uh, being um, LGD, LG, LGTBQ friendly. <laughs> it sounds like I'm saying the alphabet, but but we know that so many institutions have tried to do that and that there's different ways of doing it. Um, but we also know it's hard. It's hard to speak up. It's hard to say I'm uncomfortable. It's hard for us as adults to tell someone, I, I don't like the language you're using when I'm in your company. It is even more so difficult for a young child to speak up against an adult or their peers to say, I don't like what you're doing, or I am scared, I'm anxious and I'm feeling depressed and I don't know if I want to be here anymore. Mm -hmm. And we know that some of those children are lost in the crowd. And so we've created a platform where children can anon anonymously speak up and they can say, this is what is happening. This is where I'm at and ask for help. And, um, oh, would you mind changing the slide, please? Thank you. Perfect. So we're basically helping children to report is issues such as bullying, harassment, cheating um, to any representative at the school, whether it, whichever representative the school chooses to nominate um, for the children to speak to. We, we are not trying to replace any school's structure or protocols. We are merely trying to help with what they already have. We know there are things like anti-bullying boxes. Um, 
that children can report to. But we feel that when children get home and they, they feel that perhaps they're in the safer space, they can take their phone and they can start talking to someone and start saying, this is what is happening. This is what I'm dealing with without another child looking over their shoulder and being able to read their messages. We know children no longer pick up the phone and call in and say, this is happening at home. Please, can you help me? Because that it's not safe to do that. And this is a safer way for them to be able to speak up and reach out for help. Can you change the slide, please? Go for it. So basically what we have is a two-way communication um, mm. tool. It's very similar to WhatsApp and, and those chatty, chatty type of apps. Um, the learner will download a mobile app from the App Store for free. And the school will have a web browser or a dashboard that they will access and um, they can message each other back and forth. Now, nobody has time to stare at a dashboard all day long. <laughs> we know that, <laughs> only Facebook. <laughs> but um, we will notify the teacher or the counselor, whoever is in charge of, of, of um, looking at these reports coming in, we will notify them with via email so that they don't have to try and stare at the dashboard all day long. Um, and then they will access the dashboard and they will be able to send messages back and forth to the children. Our next slide, please. I just want to stop there. That, that tag one at the bottom, the reasons for being mm. bullied reported most often by students include physical appearance. Um, I've got a daughter of 12 years old uh, and, and, and I, I fear about, you know, what are, yeah. what are the, the, the Mikey's, the, the, mm. the friends are saying. She does, she, she's probably the only one in her grade and I'm Mr. Technology at school, but she's 12 and she doesn't have a cell phone until she turns 13. So hopefully I did something right, Kate and Rianette. <laughs> uh, she uses my phone, but she's not on a platform herself yet. But I'm concerned about it. Uh, physical appearance, outing, uh, sexual orientation, disability, all these things. Um, so, so I think this is a critical issue and kids don't talk about it because, ah, man, man up, you know, slicker, cement paliki, just toughen up. And, and it's not always that the same for, for everyone. Uh, so yeah, I just want to uh, reiterate that it's easier to bully mm. online but then you don't have a, a, re, a recourse. Yeah, yeah. And even, you know, this is not just an issue in schools, it's an issue at home. Sometimes there's severe bullying, abuse or neglect at home. And this is a mm -hmm. good way for a child to speak up who doesn't feel comfortable to do so. Okay. And for, Sorry, for I interrupted you. Go for it. No, not at all. <laughs> for the teacher or the caseworker or counselor that is, that is receiving these, um, reports from the children, they can create a downloadable and printable report, which means uh, with the auto trail. So that means there's no misinterpretation of what was said. Um, that means no extra report writing. You know, a child's come to, to speak to you and, um, and you can't jot down notes. So tonight, eight o'clock, when you're finally home and you've had your supper, you try and write down what they've said. And you're trying to to remember the words they've used and they use specific language. They speak very different language to us. And this platform captures word for word what they're saying and will give you a report. And you can add notes um, multiple times of more engagement that you've had with this child. Um, and then you can, you can print that out in case it has to escalate to anything further because we know schools would need to take that action um, yeah. and stick to the protocol of the school. You can also categorize the discussion, um, which then you can go to the next slide, oh, which sorry. then, that's fine, thank you, which then will reflect on the reports. So we've got some analytics. Um, so then schools know, they set up their own categories, uh, cyberbullying, cheating, stealing, um, plain bullying, whatever it may be. And they have these analytics that they can go back and say, these are the incidents of the reports that we have received. We have recently run um, an awareness program with our children about, let's say bullying, or let's say about positive speaking. And we have received the following reports coming in. We think children, this is making a difference. Or we have seen a decrease in the following uh, categories coming in. We think we're having a positive change or positive effect on the children. So this is quite nice for the stats. And just to say about the analytics, we um, 
we don't capture any data. We don't have access to the messages coming in because um, that is private to each school. And we also don't capture the data and sell it to anyone because that, that would just be horrid. No. Um, but we also know that the children won't always be inclined to only download an app to speak up, but that we also want to make a positive a, a change in their lives and in the school's life. And so we've added little, little extra features like articles that the schools can um, add from the dashboard from the web browser and that will push it through to the phone. And there can be articles about, gosh, anything. Um, five ways to cope with exam stress. Um, five ways to deal with a bully. Um, you know, that type of thing. Um, our sports team did well this weekend and a nice photo and a nice little write up about that, which is nice and encouraging. Um, these custom surveys where if they want real feedback from their pupils or even their teachers, you can set up very simple questions, five questions even, a yes or no, um, where you can get the real information about what they're mm. dealing with. Um, just a good survey, just a snap survey. A you know, how survey, do we feel about yeah. how do we feel about yeah. driving at the age of sixteen and drinking in the age of twenty one? My yeah. pet pet hobby at this point in time. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I um, think uh, Sonica data yeah. is the value of technology. You yeah. know, we all run around with garments and Fitbits and that kind of thing because we collect yeah. data. So this will make decision making, um, pinpointing to problems far easier. Not just the narrative yeah. of the most recent incident but the actual data speaking so yeah, i love yeah. i love data yeah and um yeah oh, we've got a special. A, like a, yes we have a special running um for all the feds of schools we would like the first uh well we have giving away for to the first 20 feds of schools the zona platform for the remainder of this year and um that's unlimited downloads of the app um we'll give the staff training oh. um support training materials as well and then if anyone would like to speak up uh, to us about if they enjoy using the application and would like to proceed then obviously we will um we will give them a, a price that is based on their school size we you know um, we understand affordability for schools as well yeah Happy. i see your uh, um contact details are there anyone uh, online can also contact me i'll pass you on through to through Brilliant. to uh, sonica and the zono team I just want to stop sharing here. So that, mm. that addresses for me the one area of the kids are silent and they don't know where to go with it. Mm. It's possibly a little bit of a niche compared to what we've, speak, we've been speaking about over the past year or two uh, with other products uh, and, and child uh, safety week or that kind of thing because we, we know that children are being targeted. Here they have a tool to speak out and at least report it to, to the discipline head at a school or something. Uh, so thanks for that. And thank you. I didn't even know that you've got a special running for the FETSA schools today. So uh, thank you for that. I hope some schools take take up the offer and, and look into how to use a platform that puts brakes on some of the problems that the accelerator pedal creates. Uh, Rachel, FYI, play it safe. You're um, in the space, uh, probably not too far from where I'm in Cape Town in a building uh, working from here today. Um, FY Plate Safe addresses a specific problem, uh, similar to what being touched, uh, similar to what Rianet is talking about. Um, we've got learners active online. What can FYI Plate Safe do for the parent? Oh, before I start there, Sonica, I just thought about this. I think teachers can use the app as well because they're, they're a staff room harassment uh, cases. They're, there's a lot of issues. It's not just the learners that are being harassed Thank online. Um, so, so, so there's also a whistleblowing uh, scenario. I think uh, the SGB and, and management team needs to manage that well, but, but there's a tool yeah. to hear what, what your staff was saying. Um, yeah. okay. Rochelle, um, parents, teachers, learners, what do we do with our children's online footprint activity exposure? How can you help? Ryan, it's, uh, I'm so glad that we're having this conversation because a lot of times when, I mean, when I talk to parents, when, when, you know, at schools, there's so much of a focus on the risks of being online, you know, and as you rightfully said, and I think Kate and Rianette also summarized, 
we talk about the risks and and you know don't go online don't do this don't do that but in the end when when we talk to a teenager and we tell them to not do something you know that's typically what they're going to do right that's what they're going to look to look for so um so i like to put a positive spin on this you know i like to think that technology in the hands of our youth yes comes with risk but there's so much benefit if we allow them to explore but allow them to do so safely and if we safeguard them you know the best we can from a from a parent perspective from a teaching perspective and really using this whole what i call the ecosystem of of online safety because that's what we've got right so on the left hand side in this ecosystem we um we've got the the enabling side we've got parents and teachers i mean we even have social media lawyers you know as part of that and on the right hand side we have uh, practical tools that can help our keep our kids safer online and help to empower parents to keep their kids safer online and i like to think about it as as you know helping the parents to help their children navigate their boundaries around online safety you know so things like screen time i believe is so important rianet said you know our children are are they tired in class but it's not just that you know you you look at you look at the increase in anxiety you look at the increase in in levels of depression among our teenagers and a lot of that is linked to the amount of sleep they get you know sleep deprivation is a big thing um and and when we talk to to children more and more i see that i mean their phones charge in their room you know it's one of those things and they don't understand why their parents implement things like screen time implement things like content filtering you know so so on the right hand side there are so many of these tools and it it doesn't have to cost you a lot of money there are so many free tools True. that parents can use to to implement some of these things and i think about you know google family link as one of them and then what we have um in the middle and that we're very proud of is is FY play it safe it's the only south african monitoring tool that helps parents to know when their children are really exposed to potential online dangerous events you know so it's able to provide parents with that extra layer of um of security so we place it you know probably um arrogantly so in the middle of this ecosystem of online safety because it empowers parents with the right information at the right time of when their children are actually exposed to content that's harmful to them so it runs in the in the background of children's devices and it monitors literally everything that happens on the screen of the device so whether they in an in-game chat or whether they in whatsapp um it or in in a browsing situation you know it monitors all their activity and it then you know it then reports on if there are any of these harmful events so just to to give you a bit of a taste in in what it looks like you know this is typically your dashboard that you'll be able to see as a parent so i have three kids i have graham kate and catherine in the middle you can see kate uh, has got a number of items that i need to quickly review um because there's some serious stuff going on there whereas graham's probably the the good guy um as soon as i click on those quick review items kate's dashboard will pop up with the screenshot of what exactly was going on at the time that we believe there is something that you need to be aware of now on this thing we on this type of view we distinguish between two things so the one is priority apps where we monitor much more closely and that's the apps that you know are kind of known for things like cyberbullying um you know where where kids pick up a lot of violence in in terms of um, content so we monitor that very closely but then there are other apps that we call blacklisted apps where we believe regardless of the content of what's in that app the parent should know that the child is using this and that's mm-hmm. something like this um anony chat that that we see on here it's apps that we don't want our children to be using at all you know think about the tinders um those type of apps it's it's not designed for them um a lot of times we get faced with the question around age restrictions but you know my child's 13 and an app is is restricted 13 so therefore it means it's okay um and i think there's a bit of a misperception in what age restrictions on apps are actually meant to do you know age restrictions on apps 
are not there to keep our, our children safe online. So, um, so one of the things that, and I don't want to go into, into too much detail about that, but one of the things I warn about is, is literally just looking at an age restriction and making the call that this is appropriate for your child um, or not. So leaving that there, if I then go to this, this dashboard on, on Kate's screen, it will then tell me, you know, the actual time that she was online and, and the amount of time that she spent. So, I mean, we all know our children are smart and they can find loopholes in every single parental control that we implement. Um, thinking about one that, you know, they, they shift the time zone on their phone and bedtime settings no longer apply. No way. You know, so... <laughs> So if I play it safe, we'll tell you exactly when your child was online and the amount of time that they spent online. So you'll be able to pick up on, on some of those loopholes. Um, it tells you which app your, your children were using, which apps and, and the, the number of alerts that got generated. And then in the, in the kind of a dashboard situation, you also see you know, where, um, where the alerts came from. So these are the categories that we, that we monitor for. Um, we're picking up quite a number of them and in, a lot in depression, self-harm, you know, suicidal ideation, that type of thoughts. We're picking up quite a, quite a bit there, um, but it's also, you know, the time of the year. Um, and uh, as we said, there are so, so many risks. But I think, you know, if we, if we go back to the, to the ecosystem of online safety, and this is something that I'm really excited about, is that we realize that we need to empower our children more. So with FY Play It Safe, you know, we're empowering the parents to have the right conversations at the right time. Um, but we realized that we need a relatable and practical education system for our tweens, teens, teen, teenage teachers, parents, and then school psychologists. Yeah. You know, so they also get this understanding and which would then empower children to be able to become better digital citizens. And um, I know this is, this is a term that Rianet uses all the time. And, and I think that is so perfectly summarized. So I'm very excited. And it's probably the, the first time that I've said it out loud um, that we've now partnered with, uh, with My Social Life in, in their program. As you know, I mean, they've got, a, they've got an eight module uh, program mm. that that focuses on digital values you know so it steers away from kind of the fear of being online and it educates children through this ed tech environment where we're really bringing ed tech out in in being able to to teach children whether it's online whether it's in a classroom situation um and bringing the message through uh, yeah. so yeah this means we we're empowering our children to navigate this um you know, and, and making better decisions themselves. And what's even, what's even better and in closing um, is that my social life is now also available as a uh, my sushi on lever. So, you know, oh. where we have our African schools, we have a solution for, for them as well, you know, in their own okay. language um, and teaching te them, you know, through the same platform, uh, their digital values. And that, Thank in you. a in a nutshell, Rian, is is yeah, what we're about. Excellent. Uh, please post. Uh, I'm going to ask all the panelists to post their contact details in the chat group. I see Rianette is uh, quick on the draw, but but make sure that people can get hold of you. So, thank you for that, Rachel. Bye, lekker om my sociale leven, my social life in Afrikaans. The scene, Kate. The the last moments of Rochelle's topic brings it a little bit away from the parent to the learner, a little bit closer to the school. Um, I have a big fear as a, an education technologist, as a, an advisor to SGBs. I want to see schools benefit from the extreme value of the technology age, the digital age, the optimization, the data, the speed, the just lighter book <laughs> bags, you know, um, there's so many there, uh, we, we can list them, but it's the accelerator, we need the brakes as well. Um, can, can, can you share a little something, uh, your thoughts, what are kids doing? Uh, how can we empower schools to venture down this road and manage this problem? 
Leonette, I'm going to pose the same question to you at the end. And I know you've got a book that's that's out in the market. So, so I don't know if you've got a copy close by that you can show us. Um, Kate, yeah, can, can you help us put schools in a position so that they can manage this space better? Yeah, so I think initially I said that our focus when we founded Be In Touch is definitely on trying to upskill and empower parents. Um, and obviously teachers as well would be within those that safety net too, because teachers are also parents, but they also every day interacting with the with our progeny. So our message really is about living online being our new normal, um, very right. much uh, around all the topics that you've already talked about, that this is life, this is we must embrace it. Um, and all of us learn how to use our tech for the greater good. So our mission is around educating um, families. I'm sorry, I don't know how to take all my little, there we go, Let's see if I can take all that off. Um, educating families about the best ways they can use tech to keep connected while staying protected. Um, so that is very much the cornerstones of what we try to work with. Um, we've been doing a lot of work in schools, both in South Africa, um, also in the uh, UK and Dubai. And um, a lot of what we're seeing in terms of the trends and the statistics, which we are, we've been gathering in the Youth Research Unit at UNISA is currently um, analyzing a lot of this anonymous data um, in preparation for a summit that we'll be presenting to in September, which is very much focused around uh, child online sexual exploitation. But, and I think Rochelle also mentioned that just now, a lot of the stats around what we're seeing with phones or tablets in rooms at night, um, together with the fact that they are unprotected, you know, even we looking at the basic screen time for iOS or Google Family Link for Androids, even those free options, um, unprotected devices. And we correlate that with the what the kids themselves are saying is when is cyberbullying happening? When is stranger, you know, inappropriate messaging from strangers happening? And that's all happening late at night. So there's certainly behavioral responses that we try to do working with the school community uh, when we get the stats and the trends coming back from mm. the kids themselves to, to say to both parents and schools, these are very um, easy, quick wins that we can apply within our school community. And of course, with more and more um, you know, sleep being linked to mental health, this would also increase the, the opportunities for proper sleep for young developing brains and bodies. So there's lots of wins around some of these seem to be very much common sense behaviors, but, they, but they're not. Um, obviously we're seeing children getting access to smart devices, which are designed for adults, younger and younger, and also getting access to social media apps, also designed um, for late teens. One of the problems being, you know, parents are very much used to the idea of films and movies all having age restrictions and they're regulated, but unfortunately there isn't regulatory body at the moment that regulates apps. And so app developers will put their apps onto the Play Store, onto the um, Apple Apple Store, or iStore, or the I Google Store, Play yeah. Store, and they put their own age limits or age thresholds in there because the younger the user, obviously, the more the revenue. So parents are also relying on something that is actually um, not a real safety net. Um, Snapchat might say th 13 on a play on an app store, but it certainly is, if you look at something like Common Sense Media, a very well-renowned international NGO that we um, we are following and apply and are associated with, they would rate that 16 plus for good reason. Um, so besides obviously um, <clears throat> the digital well-being part and, and online bullying, we, we see a lot of stranger contact happening via, again, via social media, via Instagram and Snapchat. And um, again, this is, apps and phones in the hands of very young children who've not been empowered with those skills to screenshot, block and report, and talk to a trusted adults. So they're trying to deal with these issues that are happening to them online on their own without having uh, trusted adults in contact with them, understanding what's going on, picking up these issues through smart parental controls that can give them those alerts. Pornography, a huge, big rising issue for this generation um, and sure. something that's quite difficult with our different cultures. Every culture responds to it differently um, and wants to talk about it differently. So we are very much in the work we're doing, moving away, moving this from the P word into what it needs to be a, a, a topic that's talked about in families, pornography. Kids seeing it earlier and earlier, majority of them saying that they are seeing it for the first time at home, on a home computer, generally on, a, on the internet. And 
these are unprotected devices where parents don't think that they either need to protect them or that the kids can't possibly come across it. And unfortunately, the younger the ki uh, kids are getting onto pornography and it's um, not picked up and it's not addressed, the more um, quickly they become addicted. So we are dealing a lot with families of 20 somethings who are now in trouble because they cannot maintain relationships, they don't have any real joy in life, um, and they're needing to try and find options for how they can get therapy for, um, for their children. So we're doing a lot of work around that in co-ed and in boys' schools. Um, Self-harm, of course, um, we, we typically see more kids saying that they've themselves thought about self-harming, but obviously a huge percentage also seeing others threatened yeah. to self-harm. This is a big part of our teen culture where these um, sometimes it's sad fishing, but sometimes it's real cries for help. And again, empowering our kids how to talk to trustful adults, not only about how they feel, but how they how they can support others. Sure. Nudes, again, big teen dilemma to nude or not to nude. Uh, sexting and sextortion on the rise in South Africa as well, where kids do get think they're sending a nude to a lovely looking boy or girl that they've met online and very quickly at unraveling out of control where um, there's pressure to send more nudes or they're going to be blackmailed, they're going to be released or they're going to have their parents um, told. And it, we have to really arm our children, our, our kids with yeah. the real good responses around this. And very often if they simply message back that they've told their parent who has now contacted the police because this person has child pornography on their on their device that quickly shuts down, shuts down the there. conversation. But we need to be arming our children. They need to be tough, tough online warriors. Yeah. Um, so, Kate, yeah. we're running slightly out of uh, out of time yeah. here. Um, uh, so I don't know if you if you want to hit uh, a last slide or two, but um, I, I, I want to get back to, I mean, the stats are really scary, mm -hmm. but it's life. Yeah. It's real life. Um, uh, but there's hope. There's not just the scare, not just the fear. Yeah. I, I think for me, it speaks to awareness and empowering. Awareness, there is a problem. Give them yeah. tools. What other yeah. tools are they available? I know that you guys work with Bark, um, uh, which is also yeah. there's a question. So, I mean, question. we're looking at impact on schools, obviously, with, yeah. with teachers losing teaching time because they're dealing with the social media problems, trying to resolve them at school where these are issues that are obviously created on devices given by parents to their children. We're also focusing very much on trying to get parents to think about the part of the safety net that they have to hold. So protecting and guiding their children and the devices so that schools can pick up their educating and mentoring part of it. Um, so we work with parents on what we call a, an eight steps approach, trying to break down what they need to do in small bite-sized chunks, pointing yep. them towards resources. But for schools, a big part is educating of um, parents. So for example, we're currently running a webinar for um, the Merit Schools where they're going to actually do it as a fundraiser, picking, picking up on issues that they have seen within their school. Um, and I know it's hard to get parents to come to those uh, webinars. It, it is really hard and you're getting the same parents, but slowly that word has to get out. Um, and a big thing, I think, to supplement the curriculum, the great work that like my social media and others are doing, are, are campaigns and documentary um, screenings that you can pull kids thinking before and after or parents thinking before and after to see those shifts and, and to encourage that shift in thinking and, and, and a re-look at the issues. Sure. I like that mm. um, fundraising model, but education model. <laughs> sometimes yeah. if people pay for sometimes if people pay for something, they think it's valuable. Um, yeah. instead of it's just okay we can google online safety but it means nothing so somehow if it's a it's a mass movement it's a focus it's a value driven thing at school and you pay for it so so thanks for that sorry to have to rush you um but yeah we're <laughs> i think we can do a two-hour session on this but we want to create awareness today uh, online safety is actually not a tech issue it's a human issue. Uh, yes, it's through tech, but kids were naughty. We had magazines in plastic bags when I was at school and kids were naughty. Now it's just viral. It's affordable, it's available, it's accessible. And, and that makes the problem slightly worse. Uh, and, and the availability starts at home. So thanks for that, um, Kate, I really appreciate that. Rianet, to close off for us, um, you're involved in cyber safety many years uh, you're a spokesperson for some bodies um, you're passionate about this uh, and and you're talking to schools which is where my passion lies we've got to 
get schools to live in the 21st century with us and embrace the risks, but mitigate the risks. Um, tell us about, uh, maybe a little bit about Safety Net yourself and, and the Tech Savvy book uh, and the project that we did with you uh, very recently. Great, thank you, Rianne. Um, we can see the time is passing as the sun is moving. <laughs> so, so I tried to move for a bit of that. Anyway, um, I just want to say thank you and congratulations to everybody present today for creating such amazing solutions. And the one biggest solution, I think, is collaboration, which is really what happens here. So I'm just super thankful for everyone who's coming on board and who's playing such important roles. And that's why schools, that whole issue with fear is no longer a problem because there are so many pieces to this puzzle and we are all here to support. And so we've got solutions to cover education, to help parents to be informed, all those things are covered. Where safety net steps in is if you are in trouble, if the poor boy hits the fan and the, the photo has left the building and there's trouble or someone is being harassed, cyberbullied, sextortion, um, online dating issues, safety net is there to assist the victims. And we help for free still after all these years, we still help the victims for free and refer them to other partners, whether it's a forensic analyst or a psychologist, etc. So that's one big thing, another part of the puzzle that I would like everyone to remember, because we don't want anyone to cry alone or to feel so devastated that they don't know where to go. Um, and then the collaboration part, I think, to involve our key stakeholders and some that you don't even expect. Um, I'm very excited to, to share with you um, that I'm doing a project with Cadbury PS, for instance. I mean, it's a chocolate brand. They are also, see, also seeing the importance of your words and how you use them. And coming to the campaign that you mentioned, Rianne, with my book, um, Mark Against Garam Slim and Raising a Screen Savvy Child. I'm so thankful for partners like Wondernet because they bought 500 books, which we are distributing to 120 schools in South Africa. And um, the aim is to actually, in this case, give these books to the teachers. I want these books to be going through the school into everybody's hands so that the teachers know what to look out for and that they are also empowered. And through them, we hope to reach 60,000 learners. And it just shows us that we all actually, sometimes it feels like we're all saying the same thing. And Rian, you mentioned that we might be competition. Um, we all form part of a bigger puzzle. So it's, it's really cool. And yeah, so luckily, um, this help on the end. And um, for me, it's inspiring. And I look forward to, to hearing feedback about, you know, how schools are using our solutions. Thanks, Rianette. Yeah, you, you had a little bit of a shorter time there. Our audience is still here. So I think we, we understand that it's uh, an important issue. Um, I, I think today is the start of further conversations. Uh, we're adding onto our menu, our arsenal of services in the Center for Technology, where we say we've got to learn as we live. Our learning spaces, learning processes, learning arenas have got to start mirroring our living spaces where online is a given. So how do we do it uh, without putting too much of an onus on the school, but knowing what is required? Um, you know, if a child displays bad behavior at school, we don't become the parent, we involve the parent. <laughs> we tell the parent, come in, have a meeting, uh, and we follow a discipline process. So this is just pulling all these, these uh, uh, angles and ropes closer together. So, so I want to thank my um, panel today, uh, Sonika. I uh, appreciate your offer for 20 schools. I see your uh, details are in the chat box. Uh, Rachel, there's a question for you. Um, and uh, I see you've answered that. Uh, about people find, try, trying to look for, for FYI. Um, I, I wonder if I can ask the panel to maybe contribute uh, and we'll, we'll follow up with a uh, little info note after the webinar. There's a question about what are the possible filters and platforms and tools that, that are available? I don't think one's got to research a hundred of them, but uh, Custodio, Kaspersky, uh, Bark, FYI, I played safe, uh, name it, you, you will get to them close. But we've got relationship with these people and I'm sure that they will, 
will work this relationship with us and, and, and serve our schools better. Uh, so I want to thank Sonica, uh, Rochelle, Kate, uh, say hi to Josh. I know he's in a different, uh, an, another uh, commitment this afternoon. Janet, altijd lekker om samen met jou te werken. En ook baie dankie. Thanks so much for, for the donation that you arranged for our uh, some of our schools on on your book that that can go to so many grades and parents and teachers so that we do this. guys let's be safe uh let's really uh, focus on on going forward embrace the world that we live in and put the brakes on where need be uh give licenses where need be and and be age appropriate so thank you to all i'm going to hand over to santi to close the session accented philip birians bye bye donkey thank you so much for joining us thank you very much that was so insightful and uh it's a scary world out there and it's, it's nice to have you as a support system and I really hope the parents out there get this because um, where do you start looking for that? Let me just share yeah. my contact details. If, if anyone wants to get hold of FEDSAS uh, about any governance issues, contact me tech at fedsas.org.za if you want to get hold of us, uh, chase us on our website fedsas.org.za. Um, or uh, yeah, look look for your provincial manager in that sense. And if there's anything tech related, online safety related, uh, I'll pass on the queries to our panelists. Uh, and if you want to uh, continue the discussion, they've shared their their details with you. I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks so much from a wet and rainy, uh, the sun trying to get through uh, the clouds in Cape Town. Um, have a great day. Uh, we'll see you guys online again soon. Go well. Thank you. Enjoy Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.